Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here. Today Kevin and I are going to be doing a little experiment. We're simply going to be comparing velocity data between the lab radar and the magneto speed. Uh, we're just going to be using two rifles here and we're not comparing anything else in terms of features or how they work. We're simply interested in comparing the data they give us from the rounds we're putting uh, past the two different styles of chronograph to see if they give us different readings. Uh, I'm pretty interested to see if uh, for example, the extreme spread and the SD stays the same between the two because if they gave us different um, data points for those things, it'd be pretty interesting. So anyway, uh, we have here the CZ457 MTR as well as a short barrel 1022, and we're just going to be putting a uh, rifle match. Yeah, we're going to be shooting out of the CZ out of both of them. Same thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to be shooting SK rifle match out of both rifles. The MTR, the CZ457 MTR has a 20 inch barrel. And that uh, 1022 Matt, has a 12 and a half inch barrel. There you go. So anyway, again, we're not really we're not doing this to to see how good the ammo is. We just want to compare the the readings between the two chronographs. Exactly. So let's get started. All right. So we're just about to start the test. Uh, throughout this, uh, I'm going to be calling the speeds out aloud, and I'm going to start always with the lab radar and then the magneto speed, just in case the uh, camera doesn't pick it up. Ten seventy five, ten seventy one, eleven hundred, eleven hundred and six, ten ninety, ten eighty, ten twenty six, ten eighty one. 1113, 1113, 1075, 1082, 1081, 1077, 1074, 1065, Okay, it did pick up. Sorry, I don't think we got a reading on the magneto speed on that one. Okay. So the reading on the, sorry, the magneto speed got a reading. The lab radar didn't. It's 1082. So I'm gonna fire again. 1072, 1080. So I think you're out. Okay. So, so here's a question. There was one. There was one, it, the lab radar read 1026 or something. Yeah. And the magneto speed was like 1080. Yeah. And that must be something's off. I'm guessing. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to say probably the lab radar is wrong in that reading. And it didn't pick up one round, correct? Correct. Okay, so we just did a 10 round string. Uh, the magneto speed picked up all 10 shots. The lab radar dropped one shot. It didn't pick up one of the shots. And, and can I just make a little note here? In general, the lab radar is known to be finicky for rimfire. Um, so that's yeah. kind of one of the, the downsides, I guess. So it's not surprising it missed one shot. Exactly. And then, but if we look at the readings here, again, starting with the lab radar, the average is 1078. Now it did pick up a really uh, low velocity for some reason. When, when the magneto speed didn't. But anyways, the average on the lab radar was 1078 with a standard deviation of 24. The uh, magneto speed has an average of 1083 with a standard deviation of about 15. And the reason for that discrepancy is because there was one round that was low, really low for some reason with the lab radar. So, I guess you can kind of ignore, ignoring the SD, the averages are pretty darn close. 1078 yeah. versus 1083, I would average that at 1080 anyways. We're going to run another 10 round string yep. anyways, yeah. just to see if we can eliminate those errors. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. 1090, 1092. 1088, 1089. 
1080. Nice. 1072 1083 1067 1066 1074 1084 1077 1075 that's awesome so you know what this those two two readings between all 10 shots were very close yeah. But that basically means setting up the magneto speed, or pardon me, the lab radar properly is crucial. Because we tweaked it a little bit between the first and second string. Yeah. Because we were getting some weird readings. And again, it's known to be finicky. Um, generally speaking, you know, with the magneto speed, you just slap it on your barrel. And it doesn't matter where you point, it's always going to read the same. Correct. So that's really interesting because they're, they're within three feet per second for all the readings, I think. Something like that. De I definitely agree with Matt. I mean, the, the magneto speed... Sorry, the lab radar, the reason why we thought something was going funny, because on our first string of 10, there was a misread where we didn't actually get a reading, and there was also a, a, a huge outlier where there was a very, very low velocity. All I did to that lab radar was I kind of changed the angle a little bit relative to our shooting angle, and, and it seems to have provided a much more reliable uh, reading. Yeah. So, exactly, it works, and they seem to correlate within an acceptable degree of accuracy, but it really depends on placing that thing correctly. Let's uh, let's pull up the, the SD and average just to look, and then we'll quickly do the gray birch. Okay, so for both guns, uh, sorry, for both units, the lab radar gave an average velocity of 1,080 feet per second with a standard deviation of 6.9, so 7. Uh, the Magneto speed has an average velocity of 1079, so effectively the same, with an SD of 7.8. Uh, so there is some variation there, but it doesn't take much for that to affect. So we've got an SD of, of 7 versus an SD of 8, and then that velocity of 1080 versus 1079, I would effectively say the that these are the same. Very so, yeah. All right, let's uh, quickly do it with a short barrel thing here and see if we get similar uh, results. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and reset these. All right, so as Kevin is resetting the lab writer here for our next test with the short barrel 1022, uh, I, I figured I'd mention, so we decided to shoot CCI standard velocity for this next test just because it's a different ammo and uh, it could lead to some different results. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, that's armed? It is armed. Okay. All right. All right, so we have a reading, 11.04 and Ten seventy one, ten seventy three, ten ninety two, ten ninety seven, ten ninety nine, eleven oh three, ten eighty seven, ten ninety, ten seventy seven, ten seventy four. 1066 and 1066. So the the data we're getting with this rifle and CCI standard velocity is again very close. I would say effectively the same if you're going to be plugging this data into your uh, ballistics calculator. But we'll see uh, exactly the standard deviation and such. But again, it, they were within probably five feet per second for for most of them, which I'm very happy with. Okay. So final results on that. Uh, we had, with the lab radar, an average of 1085 with the 
S standard deviation of 13.4, which is pretty good. And then uh, on the magneto speed, the we have, our average is 1088 with a standard deviation of 15.8. So in both cases, with this rifle and the other one, once we got it working right, uh, the standard deviation reading from the magneto speed is slightly higher. And I'm guessing that's because the extreme spread is just slightly different. Yeah. But uh, functionally here, I'm going to say it doesn't matter. You get 1085, 1088, that's within your, your you know. Yep. So I will say I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. I was expecting... I was expecting what we saw in the very first string before we had everything set up to be kind of the results we would see throughout the entire test. Yeah. But it's cool. Once you have the, the lab writer set up properly, they're very similar, which is kind of gives you confidence depending what system you buy. It doesn't really matter. You know, functionally, they're, they're different in how you use them. But in terms of the data you're going to get, it seems like it's going to be pretty spot on. Yeah. And that, that being said, I will say I've taken out the lab radar myself alone without any other device. Having a secondary device to give you that that uh, confidence that confidence that you've set this up correctly you know and you actually know how to set it up is is definitely uh, feels yeah. good because if i never had this this magneto speed with me and I, I i set it up you know like a like a donkey or whatever uh then who knows i could have been reading yeah upwards of yeah because you saw the first string it was totally off basically yeah, exactly. so you have to make sure you set it right i will also say so this magneto speed is mine i've had it for about a year and I've always been very happy with its performance. It's very easy to set up. Uh, obviously you have the spacer system, but once it's on your barrel, it's basically hassle-free. You just do whatever you want. Um, with the lab writer, that's ha it's known to have issues. For example, we need this mic accessory to use with the rimfire properly and whatnot. Uh, obviously you have to make the decision which one's better for yourself, but I've never been disappointed with the magneto speed, essentially. This lab writer is on loan to us at the moment just for testing purposes from the CRPS. As far, I definitely, I mean, I think it, you'll have to make the decision for yourself. One of the huge advantages, though, and this is almost like a, a, a requirement for match directors, is if you have a magneto speed uh, a oh, lab radar yeah. set up at a match, you know, typically the guy who's setting it up knows what he's doing, so you don't have that, that initial user error experience to, to deal with. Yep. You know what you're doing. You set this up on a zeroing board. You tell anybody who shows up at a match, hey, shoot that target from this position they're going to get the right reading. Yeah, yeah you're well, right. Yeah, it, um, it's true. But the, the other thing too is obviously there's a lot of caveats with each system. If you're on a firing line with 10 people, I have seen the lab radar pick up other shooters. Right. So it can be kind of frustrating. It just depends on your circumstance essentially. Exactly. But anyway, very interesting data we got today. Uh, any other thoughts? No, I think I'm all good. All right, awesome. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Okay, so this is more of a, um, an aside, not really relevant to the video, but Matt and I both use Straylock Pro uh, ballistic applications, and uh, I've actually never chronographed my this rifle. If I have, I did it once in like winter, so it doesn't even apply. Matt has chronographed his uh, CZ MTR, which is very similar, but we what we've done is in previous um, conditions, you know, you, you put in your two different velocities, so. We have one at, at 59 Fahrenheit and then another one at 17 Fahrenheit. And then from that, it creates a, a temperature profile that Straylock just like extrapolates the velocities from. And the extrapolated velocity that should have we should have expected today for the, for the current temperature is 1079. And we basically got 1079 and 1080 from, from the, the velocity yeah. reading. So it means that our, our ballistic solution or calculator, whatever you want to say, somewhat is working and, it, and yeah. is consistent. I, I've always been very impressed with Strelok's, um temperature velocity uh, estimation, I guess, because whenever I crony it in a new in a new temperature that I haven't before and I look at Strelok, it's basically the same. Yeah, so, exactly. That's so, basically a little bit of a bonus content for you there. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's take the magneto speed off and everything. So I'm just making sure here that uh, obviously my, my magneto speed <laughs> bayonet clears the bore line with the included chopstick. Very nice. You buy two magneto speeds, you have a pair of chopsticks, which I think is very culturally sensitive to us Asian people. And th these are the good chopsticks too. Yeah, those ones see, are the good ones. They're nice and girthy, <laughs> you know? Like they really can pick yeah. up some... And, and I think it's aluminum. Oh yeah, this thing's aluminum too, so yeah. yeah. 